Shalom, you're watching Arutz Sheva TV. I'm Yoni Kempinski, and this is our Daily Edition. Shalom, as the ceasefire is uh, becoming already a fact on the ground, we are here near the Iron Dome uh, system, which is uh, situated in the Gush Dan area, the center of Israel. This is the Iron Dome system, which basically has intercepted many of the missiles and the rockets which were fired to this area. This is the Iron Dome system, which was protecting the Ben Gurion Airport. We heard a few words here summing up uh, this stage of the uh, protective edge operation. Many people are, here are emphasizing that nothing here is over until it's over. For us, there is no ceasefire. As you can see, the launchers are behind me. Everything is set and ready. Historically speaking, all previous ceasefires were broken, and we will stay in such preparedness for a long time, I think. We will continue to prepare ourselves for more drastic scenarios, like the north and new elements in the south. My whole family lives in the central Israel, and after every interception, we were very excited, thinking about where the missile could have hit. We're not finished. We're continuing to be prepared. We are mainly looking up north. We expect to meet larger challenges there. The feeling of responsibility is very heavy. This time I was even protecting my family. Look at all the buildings in the area. It's great responsibility. So that's in terms of the soldiers that were here operating the Iron Dome system, intercepting the missiles throughout the days of the protective edge operation. Earlier this morning, the INF Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Benny Gantz, briefed the media about the ceasefire after Operation Protective Edge. יופנם בצורה משמעותית בעתיד ברצועת עזה, כי אנחנו לא נהסס מלהמשיך להפעיל את הכוח שלנו ככל שידרש, על מנת להבטיח את ביטחונם של אזרחי מדינת ישראל מקרוב ומרחוק. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu gave a press conference to foreign journalists on Wednesday to provide an update on the operation. Netanyahu began by noting that Israel is ready if a ceasefire is violated, saying the situation has improved since the war and that more units have been employed along the Gaza border. The goal of uh, Operation Protective Edge was and remains to protect Israeli civilians. That means to protect our people from roughly 3,500 rockets, 3,500 rockets that Hamas and the other terrorist groups have fired on our cities, on our towns, on our civilians, on our children in the last month. The goal of uh, this operation was to protect our people from the threat of terror tunnels built to send death squad squads into Israel to commit terrorist atrocities against Israel's civilians to kidnap and to kill. Israel deeply regrets every civilian casualty, every single one. We do not target them. We do not seek them. The people of Gaza are not our enemy. Our enemy is Hamas. Our enemy are the other terrorist organizations trying to kill our people. And we've taken extraordinary circumstances and measures to avoid civilian casualties. So it's a ceasefire. Are we hearing uh, peaceful messages from the Hamas? 
Not really. Hamas Deputy Leader Moussa Boumarzouk said on Wednesday that there has been no agreement to extend the 72-hour ceasefire, this according to AFP. Abu Marzouk is part of the PA delegation holding indirect talks with Israel in Cairo. Israel indicated on Wednesday it was prepared to extend the ceasefire as Egyptian mediators pushed for a durable truce, but Hamas was quick to reject that notion, with a spokesman saying that the sides would resume fighting immediately at the end of the 72-hour ceasefire at 8 a.m. Friday morning. Another Hamas official, Ismail Radwan, said that there is no extension of the truce. There will be no extension to the ceasefire, he declared, because Hamas to this moment has not yet received Israel's response to its demands. Israeli ambassador to the UN Ron Brossor sharply criticized the UN on Wednesday after Security General Ban Ki-moon accused Israel of war crimes against Palestinian Arabs in Gaza during Operation Protective Edge. It might be too much for you or to ask you to stand on our side in this battle between civilization and barbarism, but at least have the decency to swallow your selective outrage as Israel wages war against the extremist wars groups seeking to eradicate the values that we all hold very dear. Mr. President, Israel is on the front line. Earlier, Ban accused Israel of war crimes in Gaza, saying that the fighting has raised difficult questions of proportionality, attacks on civilians, and whether Israel abided by international humanitarian law. Of course, we understand the legitimate security right to defend Israeli citizens from the threat of rocket attacks by Hamas. At the same time, the fighting has raised serious questions about respect for the principles of distinction and proportionality in international humanitarian law. Perhaps nothing symbolized more the horror that was unleashed on the people of Gaza than the repeated shelling of UN facilities harboring civilians who had been explicitly told to seek a safe haven there. Many groups have canceled their visits to Israel these days because of the situation in the south and throughout Israel. We met this week uh, two families who are here as the beginning of a project, an annual project called Hayovel. These are the organizers of a big group who comes here and uh, helps the farmers of Judea and Samaria work their lands with an ideal, an ideal that it's time to help the Jewish nation in the land of Israel. We spoke to them at the Yekev Sagot, the Sagot Winery. In Benjamin. We, uh, we're actually here getting ready for a group of volunteers that's coming in. Our group Haivel brings volunteers from the U.S. and all over the world here to uh, help the small farmers. So we're here uh, getting ready. We've got about probably about 500 volunteers that will be coming in here about over the next three months. The enemies of Israel, they are motivated by a very wicked, uh, their, their, their wickedness, you know, in their hearts. And, uh, and so we, we're, we're here to, to support Israel and to say to the nations that we, uh, we need to stand against this wickedness that is, that is uh, this, this coming out. And, uh, and we need to be strong supporters of Israel because Israel is, is a, being a light to the nations, really. They are coming. I mean, they're paying the tickets, they, they're buying the tickets. They're spending money, they're spending, you know, they, 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 they give the time and the effort and they're coming for hard work. Okay, that'll be all for today's Daily Edition. We'll be back tomorrow with more news and you can get all your news, news updates, briefs, in-depth coverage of what goes on in the world, in the Jewish world and in Israel, of course, here on Arutz Sheva, IsraelNationalNews.com.